Today we're going to make regular text into bold text using shape layers in After Effects. It's going to be pretty great and uh, people seem to want to know whatever this is. So we're in After Effects, we have a new comp, we have a new solid out there. Uh, I guess the only thing to know about the comp is uh, we're working in 24 frames a second, so when I start calling out number of frames ahead, behind, then, you know, it's 24 a second. So if you want to be in line with what I'm doing, be 24 frames a second. First thing we need to do is make some new text, and uh, I'm just going to type out the word bold, because that's a good word to work with since we're making things bold. And we are going to make it white, just so you can see it. Alright, so we have the word bold, and I'm just going to make it center center in the composition here and a couple things to know about the text just because I get a lot of questions about text biggest one is why is your anchor point here well that is because the paragraph is left aligned text and that's all you need to know about that um, text usually has their anchor point at wherever the paragraph align puts it so let's say I make a duplicate of this and then I change it from regular to bold wonder why I'm doing that but anyway you do that too that you have regular text and you also have bold text that is made from a duplicate from the other. And on the bold text, let me just uh, make this a slightly different color so you can see how different it is. Um, however, it might be different, but it is also currently based on the same anchor point. So when we animate from one to the other, we're animating away from that anchor point. So just remember that about anchor points. In fact, let's go one beyond bold. Let's go all the way to black because it is a bit more of an extreme move and who doesn't like to get extreme? So we have the starting state, we have the ending state. I'm just gonna go ahead about 30 frames and then set uh, the uh, bold outlines to be there. And then I'm gonna go Control Shift D. You can go Command Shift D if you're on a Mac. I happen to be using a PC right now. Stop judging me. And uh, we've created the regular, which is going to be our start state. And then we have what we're going to turn into regular outlines, outlines, and then we have something that's going to be bold outlines, right? So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to do to do that. Why the hell do I talk like this? Anyway, we're going to right click and say create shape layers from text. Boom. So we make some shape layers that have the same shape as the text and also the same color I might add that's something to know and then we go to the bold ones and we go create shapes from text good awesome thank you very much and it has poked out the eyes of those hateful initial layers so what it's done if you want to get technical about it here let me just take away the bold here is when you hit UU you can see everything it's created about those layers um, they all seem to have a really stupid stroke on them for some reason I don't know why but uh, what is important is that it has created paths for each of these shapes and it has created merge paths and all sorts of things in here so that this can now be animated into this and this is quite an easy process the first thing go through find all the paths and click on their stopwatch meaning we're going to be setting some keyframes for these B O L N D. Perfect. Good. And now we're just going to hit uh, U and then wait a while and then hit U again to bring up all the keyframes we have. And they are keyframes for the outside of the B, the insides of the B, the outside of the O, the inside of the O, the L, and then outside of D, inside of D. Now we're going to go ahead 20 or so frames. That could be a good number. I don't really care. And now we're going to go into the bold lines and then in here, inside contents, we're going to go into the B, we're going to take the path of the B, we're going to copy it and put it into the path of the B. And then we're going to take the path of the top of the B bump and then put it into the path of the top of the B bump. Same with the bottom B bump. Just, I love saying the B sounds buh, 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 and so on. So you're going to do this for all of them. Same with the O, is that for the top and bottom O here, I'm going to do that. And one thing that's good is that the same order of paths is maintained. So you can pretty much just go through and then just copy and paste from one into the other without much fear of reprisal, of getting it wrong, of pasting the wrong path into the wrong path. Like if you pasted the outside of the D into the inside of the D, that would be really weird because you'd have your Ds in the wrong A's, 
or something. Anyway, I'm sure there was a joke I could have made there, but I just failed miserably. So, you have a start state and an end state. One thing you'll notice, though, is when you animate them, that is not even close to what you were hoping. I mean, the O kind of worked out. I mean, I think it's, it's actually spot on. But most of them have failed pretty miserably. So what you have to do is you have to go in and you have to refine the paths. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going here, let's start with the B, and you want to select which one of these is the first vertex. And you find that by going layer, mask and shape, set first vertex. So I've made this point the first vertex. Now I go back to the initial frame, select the same point, which is this point between the two humps. Then we go layer, mask and shape, set first vertex and that will keep it consistently that vertex moving forward. These two worked out fine. You can see the top corner is always the first vertex and that's always where it is, so that was good. And with the O, everything seems to be scaling nicely and uh, that's good. The L seemed to have fouled up just miserably, so we're gonna select a pretty stable corner, like this inside pocket. And we go layer, mask and shape, set first vertex, it's gonna be right there. And then same thing on the first one. We're gonna go here, layer, mask and shape, set versus vertex, and then perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, now with the D, same thing, top corner here, go layer, set first vertex, and I guess we're gonna wanna do the same thing for the inside here, so layer, set first vertex, so that's those two. Go back to the beginning, make sure that we have layer, set first vertex for those, mm, kinda, kinda okay. We have this errant point This is going crazy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it the first vertex. We're gonna go layer. Again, I keep saying this, but it's important because this is a command you need to know. And then we just need to make sure that that vertex stays down here. Have a look at that, good. Some of the things that cause errors are things like the end state having more or less or fewer or however you say that, points than the initial state. Sometimes what you'll have to do is you'll have to go through and manual it, but this is a good way of getting most of the hard work done. So the next thing to do is just take all of these keyframes, which easy ease them, and then go here into the graph editor and pinch this first part this way, pull this part that way, and then it accelerates pretty quickly. Boom! Kind of like that. And then, you know, you can just take this and drag it out a bit if you so desire. And what I did in the example was I applied a drop shadow, drop shadow to this, and you know, just gave it a distance of 36 or something, or so that at the end, you know, we're looking at maybe 25 is good, okay? And then at the beginning, it doesn't need to be that far away, so let's give it a distance of like six maybe. And then take those and just make sure that their uh, path here, their motion graph, is equivalent so that it doesn't look weird and then plop, just kind of stretches out like that good 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 perfect stuff I'm feeling feeling moderately well about what we've created and this is the sort of effect that I've seen used in the intro I think it was something called make it better I guess people keep sending that to me and I know it's super exciting but to me you have to realize that video is not actually exciting because it is a compilation of many simple things. It's all done very well, and kudos for that agency for doing it well, but um, it does not break any new ground, and as you can see, this was something that we were able to do in roughly five minutes, so try not to overthink how awesome things look. Just remember, there are probably simple solutions for anything. I guess they seem simple to me because I'm what you call an expert. This is probably the last time I ever call myself an expert on anything just because I know I'm usually wrong about stuff. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching this thing. Hopefully it's been helpful to you and I hope you enjoy making bold text out of your regular boring text that uh, has no friends. And of course, uh, subscribe to the channel because there's always VFX and motion graphics stuff going on here. Uh, I talk a lot about After Effects but sometimes other programs. Uh, sometimes I talk about theory in uh, vlogs but you know, it's usually the tutorials uh, every Saturday or most Saturdays, except when I'm wicked busy, balling out of control and being hung over. Again, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, tweet at me, at EC Abrams. Get involved on the Facebook. And I guess that's all the buzz marketing. So have a nice day, and I'll see you around the internet.